Hello and welcome to the Baron's Game Room, or Dining Room Table, because my game room's kind of messy right now. Uh, anyways, it's March, you know, uh, St. Patrick's Day, Luck of the Irish and all that, so I thought maybe I'd do something about Luck Games this month, or at least this video. A game we've been playing a lot lately has been <coughs> the Cuphead Fast Rolling Dice Game. Cuphead the Fast Rolling Dice Game is made by the OP, it's a cooperative game for 1-4 to four players, it says 12 and up, but I don't really get what that's about. And uh, 20 minutes, sort of. Every time you play, you're going to fight one of these eight different boss decks. This is the one we haven't played yet. And that's why I say 20 minutes, sort of, because beating any one of these decks will take you about that long. But of course, if you wanted to play through them all in one long sitting, it'd take you a while. Before you start, every player will need to pick out a character. There's nothing different about them. It's just what color dice you'll be using. Once you've picked your character and which boss you're going to fight against, you're going to try to start. Just make sure everyone has 3 HP and all 6 dice of their color. Now, each boss deck is actually fought in a number of phases. Basically, when you start these decks, you'll see these little phase cards here, and you'll see how many cards are in this phase. So when you end up counting down that many cards to the deck, you'll eventually hit one of these stop cards. You'll just use these to what you fight against in this phase. Depending on how many players you have, this right here tells you how much HP you'll need to set this little wheel to. Then just give these cards a shuffle, and place them right here at the draw area. Lastly, make sure you shuffle out the wallop cards and set them by the little board as well. Each round, you're gonna flip out three cards from this deck onto this board here. Now, why are there four of them? Because sometimes you'll whip out these wallop cards. Anytime you pull out a wallop card, you'll end up flipping out a fourth card as well. And now it's time to start the round. One thing we'll need to decide though is how long of a timer you wanna have on each round. You can do hard mode at 10 seconds per round, medium at 15, or easy at 20, which personally, 20 is not enough in my opinion. So we usually play 20 and barely get by. Once you start your timer, you'll be rolling the dice to try and match the icons you see on these cards and setting them onto these little spots on your board here. Now they've got some pretty strict rules about placing dice and all that, and that's really where the difficulty of the game comes in besides luck of the roll. Each of these little spots of two correlate to the four spots on the board there, meaning you have to very specifically set the matching icon into the right spot for you to match it to that card. If I were to place this over here, it no longer matches to the second card because it's in the first card area. Now, wallop cards are completely optional, but if you choose to match the diamond to it, you'll end up getting to draw one of these wallop cards, which usually are beneficial things to help you out throughout the rest of the fight. But if you choose to skip them, you won't take any damage. However, with all these other ones, if you match the proper icon to it, you avoid the damage from that card. But if you end up not being able to play a dice to an area or play the wrong one to an area, then you end up losing one HP. And as you can see, you only have three HP. One special facing is the parry token. Basically, whenever you play one of these downs, you will gain a parry token. Now, parry tokens will be used for a few things throughout the game. Some weapons and power-ups will use them, but the main thing they're used for is anytime someone's HP hits zero, you can get rid of one of your parry tokens to keep them in the game with one HP. Because if anyone's HP ever reaches zero, you lose the entire boss fight, have to try again. Now, the one thing I haven't talked about is damage. How you supposed to actually beat these guys? Well, that's where this icon comes in, where sometimes you'll need to use it to match certain cards. For the most part, this is the shoot action, which basically means anytime you've officially blocked an attack which is by matching the proper icon you can place this in that extra second slot and every time you do that's going to be pop one hit on the opponent there are different weapons you can get throughout the game other than your starting basic pea shooter which can deal extra damage in various ways there's also the ex die which is one of your six dice and every weapon has a special ex ability like when you use this one it's two damage instead of one now the phase decks do have a limited size, like this one is only 13. Whenever you run out of a phase deck, you have to reshuffle it all, put it back on the draw side, but also you get a time token. Now those don't really mean much except for at the end of the whole boss fight, you'll get a final score depending on how good you did, and time tokens are like negative points to that. So the more time tokens you have, the worse your final score is gonna be. But once you finally get them down to the KO side, you've officially beaten this phase. Discard away all cards that have to do with this phase, move this stop card, and then simply move on to the next phase. Eventually you'll find that the only thing left is the knockout card. 
That means you've officially beaten this boss, you'll end up getting this many coins, which you can use to buy things from Pork Rinds Emporium. Quick side note, you can fight these bosses as many times as you want. The first time you beat them, you'll get the number of coins shown on the card, but every other fight after that, you just get one coin. At the bottom of each deck, you'll end up finding a few more Pork Rinds Emporium cards. We have so many because we've beaten nearly every boss so far. But each deck, when you first play, is going to give you like one to two new charms or weapons or such. And basically, you get to use those coins you have to buy these, and they're just power-ups you can use throughout the game to make it easier, usually. Interestingly enough, they found a way to put in unlockable content into this board game. These are the Super Art envelopes, and you'll see that you're only allowed to open them when you meet certain requirements, which is kind of cool. It's a very honor system, but it's nifty. And that's really the basics of it all. As you play through the different decks, there'll be different things they add in sometimes, like certain bosses where we had to stack dice on top of each other or the direction we pointed some of our dice was important. Different little things here and there that kind of switch it up, but in general, that's how you play it all. Keep in mind that when completing the cards, you can only match stuff to the leftmost card, but you are allowed to skip ahead, you're just also not allowed to go back. So if you choose to skip a card because you're just not rolling what you need for it, you can go ahead and go on to the next card and match dice to that card. However, if you later roll what you need for that previous card, you can't go back to it. You're just stuck taking the hit. But enough about the how to play. Let's go to my thoughts and feelings about this game. Um, I'm a fan of dice games in general. I don't mind the luck-based stuff myself, so it can be a lot of fun. I tend to like games that have some of that frantic energy of like, oh man, we got to go, we got to go. Five Minute Dungeon's a really good one for me that I have a lot of fun with. Uh, stuff like that really is pretty entertaining to me. I will say that a lot of times it feels a little unfair. They lean a little too heavily on luck sometimes. Um, you can try your best to do luck mitigation with the power-ups and all that stuff, but you have to earn those as you go through the game. So you're going to have to deal with the boss fights that feel really difficult and kind of unfair to unlock the weapons you need to make it easier and feel more fair, you know? Basically what I'm saying is that if you're someone that gets stressed out a little too easy and really hates luck stuff, it's not for you. Because even though the actual game of Cuphead is about, you know, learning the patterns and getting the skill to avoid it all, sometimes luck, this is almost entirely luck. Like, you are fully at the mercy of the dice, and the only really skilled times you get to make decisions on is when you want to take a hit to try and protect yourself from other future hits. And I know it says one to four players, but honestly, with how many times we've had to save each other with our parry tokens, this would have to be insanely hard for one player. It does have a few rules on how a single player can use their parry tokens to keep them in the game, but it's not quite as easy as just, oh, you died, get rid of one parry token and you have one health. So, I don't know, solo seems like it'd be pretty hard. Final thoughts on it, fun, chaotic energy, frustrating for sure sometimes, heavily luck-based, a little bit groups. It's not a great game to me, it's not my favorite, but it's definitely still good enough to be considered. Baron approved.